and welcome to today's Live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you live from beautiful Hungary. I hope everybody has had a good week and is looking forward to a fantastic weekend. Welcome, uh, Sheik, Anthony, Daliwal, Lily, Pachu. Nice to see many of our regular students, Manpreet, and welcome members, Victor. Good to see everyone in class. Hi, Catherine. Uh, students, in this class, we are focusing on speaking part three. It is a speaking class, so make sure to speak and repeat. So when I ask questions, give answers, make corrections, just repeat my intonation, my enunciation uh, as best as you can, okay? Nice and loud, be confident. This lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Please visit us there. And for general IELTS, check us out at gieltshelp.com. We have loads and loads of help for you on those websites to improve your communication, your English, pass IELTS. Uh, and of course, we have lots of help for speaking as well. So this is the academic uh, website here. Uh, with the blue background, you can click that big red button to join the premium package. And this is the general version here with the green background. You can click that big red button and then uh, you can use the speaking services. You can do video and audio chat with other students there. So make sure to use those. Uh, also download our apps, link them to your websites. Academic IELTS Help will link to ahelp.com. General IELTS Help will link to gieltshelp.com. Uh, and of course, if you have questions, just send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com. All right, so let's talk about speaking. Uh, the speaking interview uh, goes for about 12 to 15 minutes. Uh, you are in a private room with an examiner who is interviewing you face to face. This is the same for the general and the academic version of the exams. And it is the same for the paper based and the computer based uh, versions of the exam as well. All right. Uh, Shuba Shirat, no, I live in Canada. Currently, I'm in Hungary. I'm from West Coast, Canada. <laughs> All right, not in the UK. So uh, today, speaking part three, tomorrow we'll have a question and answer session for members and some more speaking. So lots and lots of speaking practice this week. I feel that's one of the areas where many people need that regular practice. So we're going to keep going with that today and tomorrow. Now, before we begin, uh, this speaking part three is continuing from our part two cue card the other day. Uh, does anybody remember what the part two cue card was about? So we covered a part two cue card question. If you weren't here for that class, that's okay. If you were here for that class and you remember what the question was and what we answered, that's fantastic. So part two, uh, last uh, class. What was it about? LePay says a city different from your hometown that you visited, right? So that's right. I see a few of you answering. That's fantastic. So a city um, other than your hometown that you visited. Okay. Good. And what was our part two response? What did we answer to that? Aha, uh -huh. Wang Junji says it was New York. Happy Singh agrees. Definitely. Uh, many of you were there. Great. Yeah. So we visited uh, New York City for two weeks. Saw many attractions there. Okay. Love the city. All right. Yeah, that sounds great. So uh, just a tip right away, students. Uh, keep this in mind that to get high band scores 
on the speaking section, you must make connections among the answers that you give. Uh, specifically, you should connect some of your part three answers to your uh, part two monologue. Okay, so the answer that you gave in part two, uh, you should make connections. That's why the examiner will say, okay, that is the end of part two. Now we will continue with part three. I'm going to take back the card with the questions, the note paper, the pencil, and now I will ask you some more questions related uh, to the topic of part two. And then the examiner may continue with something like, uh, let's talk about travel, okay? And uh, so here we go, uh, let's do this. So give me an answer. And for those of you, especially who were here for that uh, part two class, make some connections there, okay? So some people like to plan their trips. Others prefer to be spontaneous. Which do you think is better? Don't get too fancy. Just give a clear answer, okay? So some people like to plan their trips. Others prefer to be spontaneous. Which do you think is better? An says, I believe that being prepared for a trip is more beneficial as it can save people's time, uh, like getting avoiding getting lost and not knowing where to visit. A tour guide is uh, very helpful in these circumstances. Okay, Ann, good. Uh, make a connection to the part two. Okay, it sounds like you prepared for that answer before class. In the future, remember to make connections with part two. Okay. Aman Jot says, well, I think planning is the best. Uh, it not only helps save uh, precious time, but also um, assists in uh, having a greater level of enjoyment. Okay, Aman Jot. All right, looks like there's two Amanjot colors in there. Beck John says, I definitely think the first option is better than uh, ending up being in an unanticipated moment uh, like shortage of money and wondering where to go. Arranging an itinerary in advance helps individuals to save both uh, time And energy, that is exactly what I did when visiting New York. Yeah, Beg John, uh, if you gave answers like that in your speaking interview fluently, there is absolutely no way you should be scoring a 5.5. So I'm not sure what happened, but that answer said fluently is definitely between a band 8 and a band 9. No question about it. Just uh, lexical resource, accuracy, coherence, it's all there. So uh, yeah, you have to... Uh, Make sure that you can reproduce that in the official exam, okay? So calm yourself, focus yourself. Brooklyn Aurelia says, for me, I like to plan my trip so that I don't have to waste my time on figuring it out as I go along uh, when I get there. Okay. Uh, Victor says, I think planning trips is better because uh, it helps to avoid some problems and uh, being prepared for various situations. I always arrange my trips, and this is really helpful when traveling. Yeah, so Victor, that's definitely where you can connect to that New York example, right? Uh, itinerary is a very good word here. I'll explain that in a second. Preeti is using that word also. So students, it's itinerary, itinerary. Watch the pronunciation on that one, okay? Uh, I think making an itinerary is very good because not only can people save money, but also it prepares them for unwanted incidences like getting lost in a city and not knowing where to go or waiting in long lineups uh, to get into the museums, right? Okay, sure. So in my opinion, it is much better to plan ahead and prepare an itinerary before embarking on travel rather than 
implying by the seat of your pants not only does preparation help to have a more enjoyable trip like avoiding long queues at tourist destinations but it also ensures uh, safety like not getting lost in a bad area of town for these very reasons I had each day of my New York visit planned carefully and it definitely panned out for the better. All right, so students here, I am pushing and pushing uh, for those high band scores in teaching you uh, some new idioms, some new vocabulary. Remember, there are lots of you in this class, so I'm sure many of you know many words, especially when combined all of your knowledge. Uh, so that's why I'm getting a little bit fancier and hopefully teaching all of you at least a little bit of new uh, knowledge, maybe a little bit of pop culture expressions and idiomatic language as well. Now, that uh, being said, be very careful with idioms. Only use idioms that you are 100% sure are correct in context. Do not misuse idioms in the speaking as that will definitely lower your score because it makes your communication incomprehensible, meaning difficult to understand. So um, here we go. Repeat after me. Repeat the question. Some people like to plan their trips. Others prefer to be spontaneous. Which do you think is better? Here we go. In my opinion, it is much better to plan ahead and prepare an itinerary before embarking on travel rather than flying by the seat of your pants. Not only does preparation help to have a more enjoyable trip, like avoiding long queues at tourist destinations, but it also ensures safety, like not getting lost in a bad area of town. Uh, for these very reasons, I had each of my New York visits planned carefully, and it definitely panned out for the better. Okay, so I'm sure you have a couple of questions about the word use there. Uh, and uh, I'm going to explain that to you, okay? So an itinerary is a planned schedule of activities um, usually when traveling, okay? So remember that word, itinerary, okay? Another one that you're probably wondering about <laughs> is this one. It's one of my, I love this idiom, okay? It's flying by the seat of your pants. It's a very visual idiom. Uh, just imagine somebody holding uh, the back of their pants and just kind of, woo, flying through uh, the air. That's what flying by the seat of your pants means. It means being very spontaneous, and not knowing what is coming next, okay? So that's the idiom for flying by the seat of your pants. Now, uh, pan out for the better, that's kind of an interesting one. Pan out uh, is clearly a phrasal verb, and um, it's uh, also an idiomatic use here, okay? So uh, pan out. Uh, some of you out there, um, yeah, Rajveer, Mr. Bean definitely flies by the seat of his pants all the time. Yeah, that's one of the reasons we love Mr. Bean. Um, pan out, uh, I don't, I'm not sure if it's just an American expression, but, um, when people are panning for gold in the river, keep that in mind. So, uh, you have your gold pan, looks like a bowl. 
Some of you might have seen this in movies or maybe even in real life. And uh, you're by the river and you're kind of washing the stones and the water in the river, hoping that on the bottom of your pan, you have some pieces of gold. Uh, so that's called panning out. Now, obviously, when you find some gold at the bottom of that pan, that's a good day. So pan out means to result in a positive way. Okay, so pan out means to have a positive outcome. All right, so those are some words uh, for you. So panning out, okay? Uh, here it means panned out for the better. It means that uh, it was good for me to have that itinerary. All right, okay, cool. Okay, so notice what I'm doing here. Uh, I gave an answer, an explanation, an example, and I connected to my part two. That's what you want to do, okay? And of course, lexical resource, grammar, it all adds to those higher band scores. All right. Yeah, pan out, modung means success. You found gold. All right. The correct verb is struck gold. You've struck gold. All right. Uh, so here we go. Next question. What are important preparations before taking a trip? to another country. So what are important preparations before taking a trip to another country? Abhay says, I believe the most important preparation is to carry a comfortable clothes and medicine. I also uh, prefer to have a credit card with me. If I don't have cash, uh, I can easily use my card. Okay, Abhay. Yeah. So be prepared with uh, maybe both cash and credit card so that you can navigate various situations like grabbing a taxi. Right, Abhay? Give details. Students, you'll get better band scores if you go into details. All right. Shravan says, when going on a trip uh, to another country, it's a good idea to prepare many items related such as uh, clothes, food, and other valuable goods. Shravan, good start. Again, careful with my corrections there. Notice how I don't use the word things. I'm more specific, although I keep my answer in the objective third-person voice. So I don't use we or us or you unless it's an idiom like I did before there. Um, and you want to go into details, Shravan. You want to go into details. Okay, uh, Pachu says, I think the most important preparation before taking a trip abroad um, are bringing the necessary documents, budgeting, and a good knowledge of the culture and language. Okay, very good, Pachu. Make some connections to part two. Okay, notice my corrections there. All right, and I see furthermore booking accommodations and travel insurance are a good idea. Yeah. All right, put you again. Students, the goal is not just to list more and more ideas, but to go into details, create depth, clarity, and uniqueness in your communication, and your band score will go up, up, and up. Okay? Always says, sure, uh, we should be willing uh, to prepare before travel to another country, including a knowledge of language, traditions, and food. Uh, before I went to New York uh, a couple of years ago, I searched on Google about hotels and uh, made sure to learn some of the local expressions. All right, Ois, I made some corrections there as well. Be careful. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see some more. Uh, Rajveer says, in my opinion, people should arrange their travel tickets beforehand, whether it's a train or a plane ticket to avoid long queues. Also, individuals should carry some snacks, clothes, and water, uh, a bottle of water to stay hydrated. Yeah, it's nothing worse than being thirsty and not knowing where to find water, right? It's awful. Okay, very good, Rajveer. So, um, some necessary considerations uh, before going abroad yeah so 
taking a trip to another country, paraphrase quick and simple, going abroad, right? So some necessary considerations before going abroad are to make sure that all of the uh, travel documents are in order. Like, uh, like what? Okay, so uh, instead of me giving you the answer, I want you to help me build this answer this time. So what kind of a travel document would you want to make sure that you have in order before you go abroad? And I'm sure many of you are working on this right now. That's why you're taking the IELTS exam. So Hadi says a passport. Uh, Darren says a visa. Uh, what kind of a visa? Maybe a tourist visa or a uh, residency visa, something like that, right? like a tourist visa. Uh, otherwise, what will happen? So if you don't have a tourist visa, what's going to happen? So this is the logic that I'm following in my mind when I'm communicating to my listener. I'm always thinking what, why, how, staying on topic and going into detail. So Amanjot says it's punishment. Um, be more specific, Amanjot, what kind of punishment? Uh, you will be deported. You won't be able to enter the country. That's right, Catherine. That's the most accurate. Otherwise, the person uh, is not permitted into the country. Okay. All right. So, um, in addition, it is important to... Uh, budget for the duration of the visit and bring both plastic and cash in this way. Okay, um, so, okay, so in addition, it is important to budget for the duration of the visit and bring both plastic and cash. Why? Why would I want to bring both plastic and cash on my trip. So why is it a good idea to have paper money uh, or paper currency as well as a credit card with me? What can happen in this way? So uh, again, thinking and answering, okay? Oh, hey, that's totally fine. Just keep giving as much information as you can or write it in two comments, okay? So what can we do here? All right. So Victor says in order to pay for living hotel, uh, Amanjot says uh, for illness or accidents. So Sergeant uh, Shelby says credit cards can be useful when uh, if a person's out of cash or in an emergency situation. Yeah, absolutely. So in this way, uh, travelers can be prepared for unexpected emergencies. Such as having to grab a cab in the middle of the night. Okay, um, I had, I always had a $50 bill tucked into my wallet while traveling around the Big Apple. Yeah. Exactly. So that's how I build my answer. Okay. I always think about what, why, how, what, why, how, what, why, how. So just like in writing, we do the same in speaking. And the more you practice this, the faster you will become at doing this in real time so that you can visualize and speak progressively. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, some vaccinations might be required as well. So you could talk a lot about this. Uh, most importantly, go into detail. So don't just keep bouncing around with different ideas. Okay. Uh, Ojumiri, Big Apple means New York. 
We talked about that the other day. So Big Apple is a nickname for uh, New York. So here we go. Repeat after me. What are important preparations before taking a trip to another country? Some necessary considerations before going abroad are to make sure that all of the travel documents are in order, like a tourist visa. Otherwise, the person is not permitted into the country. In addition, it is important to budget for the duration of the visit and bring both plastic and cash. In this way, travelers can be prepared for unexpected emergencies, such as having to grab a cab in the middle of the night. I always had a $50 bill tucked into my wallet while traveling around the Big Apple. All right, that's how it's done. So nice, fluent, clear language. Okay, here we go. Next question. All right. Um, so when people travel to some countries, they need to request a permit, like a tourist visa. Why is this? That's an interesting question. I'd probably take a second to think about it if it wasn't uh, knowledge available to my mind right away. Okay. So Ferdov says, because there is an inequality on our planet, people from developing countries always try to immigrate to develop nations seeking better life and visa officers filter applications or reject them. All right, Ferdows, and why? So why is that? It, you kind of have a half of an answer there, I think, for Dobbs. Uh, Beckjen says, in my opinion, this is because the country's problem with immigration, especially those developed nations like U.S. and Canada, where thousands of people are living literally without any visas, in order to prevent this, many countries demand visitors to have different types of visas. Uh, just an interesting piece of information, students. It's not just wealthy countries uh, that demand visitor visas. Um, if I want to travel to Russia, for example, even though I'm Canadian, I have to get a visitor visa, and it's quite expensive. Um, if I want to travel to certain parts of the Middle East as a Canadian, I need to get a visitor visa. So it's not just... Uh, wealthy countries. That's absolutely a misconception. Uh, I want to make sure everybody's clear on that. Okay. So tourist visas are demanded by many countries from many other countries. All right. Keep that in mind. Uh, Piyush says, by enforcing tourist visa policies, countries make sure that tourists who are planning to visit foreign countries are capable of surviving there. Yeah, Piyush. I agree. That's a good answer. Yeah, they want to make sure that you're not going to be getting yourself into trouble. Okay. Darren says, yeah, you're right. It's a bit expensive. Yeah, I was surprised to learn how expensive the Russian tourist visa is. It's like $300 or U.S. for a tourist visa to Russia. Okay. Uh, it's much more expensive than the Canadian tourist visa. Um, Rajveer says, uh, this is an interesting question. I think um, these necessary permits are required to protect the sovereignty of the country and to avoid unnecessary um, complications. It's also a way to boost the economy of the uh, visited countries. Okay, good. Uh, Catherine says, government's decisions to identify who is the traveler without a work permit. Yeah, absolutely, Catherine. So I think that's a great answer. I think you need to express yourself a little bit better, but you're definitely on the right idea. So um, it's also an identification process, right? So the government wants to know, hey, who is this person? What are they doing? Why are they here? How long are they staying? So they want more information about the individual before they enter the country. Uh, definitely, it's a way to gather data and information and to make uh, better decisions. Okay. All right. Uh, Romaine says, immigration services of the country, uh, people enter. Oh, Romaine, there we go. Of the country we are preparing to enter or aware about who is getting in for security reasons. Yeah, of course. Uh, you could very well have uh, a person who has escaped 
uh, jail or prison and they're jumping borders and going into another country and that country has the right to know who that person is, right? Okay. All right, sure. So, um, in several different border situations where people cross over into another nation, they are required various types of permits uh, for security and identification uh, reasons so that the government can make informed decisions about the people they let into their country. Governments like the US want to make sure that a person who is visiting New York won't suddenly decide to immigrate illegally and get a get a black market employment. Okay, sure. Here we go. Um, repeat after me. Question and answer. Students always practice the questions, not just the answers. Okay, so uh, when people travel to some countries, they need to request a permit like a tourist visa. Why is this? In several different border situations where people cross over into another nation, they are required various types of permits for security and identification reasons so that the government can make informed decisions about the people they let into their country. Governments like the U.S. want to make sure that a person who is visiting New York won't suddenly decide to immigrate illegally and get black market employment. Makes sense, right? Thank you. Okay, so you're doing a good job. And now the examiner says, let's talk about tourism. And here we go. Let's do that. Let's talk about tourism a little bit. Okay. Here we go. Let's talk about tourism. Tourism is a bigger business now than ever before. Why is this? Well, probably outside of COVID. Now we're all feeling the effects of not having tourism because of COVID. So I'm sure that's uh, going to assist some of you in answering this question. Uh, let's see what you come up with. All right. Shub Shirat says, uh, okay, that's for the previous one. Amanjad, I think you're a little bit off topic. Reconsider it, rewrite it. Piyush says, I think due to technological advancements, people have earned incredible uh, remunerations so that people choose holidays to spend their recreational time. As a result, tourism industry has become significantly bigger. Okay, Piyush, I think it's a bit overly complex uh, and uh, saying a little bit, um, so not enough information, okay? Uh, if you're going to use a lot of complex language, also provide a lot of information with that. So don't unnecessarily uh, overcomplicate. Um, so I think you could simplify that. I think you could just simply say, uh, because of advancements in technology, people have more money to travel, uh, so tourism has become much bigger. Okay. Uh, Un says, I think it's mainly because people nowadays 
have a greater tendency to travel uh, either in their own country or abroad. Money from hotels and restaurants can benefit the tourist industry to help locals prosper. Okay, very good, Un. Just a few corrections there. Okay. Um, you don't have to agree with this for Dobbs, so rethink that. Okay. That answer. Um, Amanjot, same thing. You don't need to agree with this. So it just says tourism is a bigger business now than ever before. Why is this? It doesn't ask you if you agree with it or not. It's a fact. We all know that tourism is a bigger business now than ever before. So it's awkward to start by saying, I fully agree with this. Okay. Uh, nobody's asking for agreement here. And that's strange to say that in this case. Uh, Ois says that is because transportation means have become cheaper than before. Another reason is that most countries uh, make tourism procedures easier. I got my visa for New York in just three weeks. Ois, that's a beautiful answer. I love that connection at the end. It's quantitative. It's clear. Uh, it's natural. I love it. Okay, so countries have made the procedure for tourism much easier. Uh, I got my uh, visa for New York in three weeks. And I think that's very true, Ois. When I listen to my parents, especially my grandparents when they were still alive, talk about traveling to other places for tourism, it was a big ordeal. Like they planned a whole year for one trip. Um, and nowadays people just zip up and go and they say, hey, next month, let's go too. And off they go and away they go. Of course, when there's no COVID, right? Okay. So yeah, the ease of tourism, right? The ease of crossing into other countries, of traveling there, the mode of transportation, way more planes today than ever before. Okay. Uh, Panya says it's true that tourism is bigger business now than ever before because people have a cheap and simple process to go abroad. Um, yeah, and Panya, again, you can throw in some information uh, from part two, right? Okay, so I think that the main reasons uh, why tourism has become a dominant industry globally is because people are able to travel cheaper than ever before. Like me, I got my plane ticket to New York for just $500. And also the process has really been simplified by modern technology. There is no longer a need to stand in long queues to get tourist uh, visas. It's possible to get it online. I got my New York or US uh, tourist uh, visa in less than 10 days. Okay. All right. Yeah, absolutely. Be visual, right? So that's why tourism, that's what those are some of the major reasons. Uh, yeah, we have more money. We have more luxuries. Uh, we have more planes, trains, boats than ever before, and they are relatively much cheaper. Okay. So uh, here we go. Repeat after me. Tourism is a bigger business now than ever before. Why is this? I think the main reasons why tourism has become a dominant industry globally is because people are able to travel cheaper than ever before. Like me, I got my plane ticket to New York for just $500. And also the process has really been simplified by modern technology. There is no longer a need to stand in long queues to get tourist visas. It's possible to get it online. I got my U.S. tourist visa in less than 10 days. Okay, 
So what grammar am I using twice in this, uh, in this response? What grammar am I using twice? There's a grammar that I'm really emphasizing for the examiner here so that they can see that grammar range and lexical resource. Rajveer says, uh, present perfect. Yeah, that's right. So absolutely, has become a dominant industry, right? Um, and uh, has been simplified, okay? Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's what will get you some more marks, okay? All right, everyone, here are a couple of questions that I will give you for homework. You can try these on your own. You can send them to me by email. I recommend recording your answer as an MP3 on your phone and sending it to me, and I'll let you know what band level your response would be. Okay, so here's a question. Can you think of any new kinds of tourism that hadn't existed 50 years ago? Many people make travel arrangements using the internet. How has this changed tourism? A couple of interesting questions. Answer them, record them on your phone and MP3, send them to me, and I will give you a band score estimate. To practice your speaking with other students for free with video and audio chat, go to aehelp.com or gltshelp.com. This is for academic, this is for general. Uh, click on the student partner speaking button in your My Student account and wait for a student and begin practicing and uh, speaking. That's it for me for today. Lots of great answers, everyone. I love the interaction. Um, it's great that many of you are preparing for these classes. Again, remember, link your answers, give answers, explanations, give details. Think about your responses in the form of questions. What am I saying? Why am I saying this? How does this work? Can I give an example? Okay, keep practicing that and you will get those high band scores. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out from Budapest for now. Hopefully, I'll see most of you tomorrow. Have an awesome rest of your day. Bye.